esa es nuestra religión, esa es nuestra forma de pensar. Yo cuando juego, yo no juego yo. Al momento de yo jugar, dejo mi cuerpo para que la energía de mis ancestros pueda manifestarse es físicamente en este plano. Lo que yo siento por el deporte es mucho amor. Esto desayuno, esto seno, esto almuerzo. Mi vida es esto desde que me paro. Over 3,000 years ago, long before humans thought of basketball or soccer, the Mayans were playing a sport called Mesoamerican ballgame, which was once one of the most important traditions in their culture. Today, a group of Mexicans are trying to revive this ancient game, and Armando is at the heart of this movement. My name is Armando Osorio, and I to spread the game of pelota in Mexico and in other countries. Es un juego de invasión donde yo tengo que ir sacando de su propia cancha al oponente hasta sacar la pelota por en medio de la línea de fondo que ellos tienen. Look closely and you'll see what makes this sport so unique that you can only use your hips to hit the ball. No hands, no feet, just your bare hips against a solid rubber ball. La pelota está hecha de caucho macizo. Es de un árbol de hule. La parte más difícil de este juego es el inicio. Porque se te hacen hematomas muy grandes, moretones muy muy grandes. Hace como tres años éramos cuatro equipos. El año pasado que convoqué a todos los estados ya éramos ocho y ahorita ya somos 17 estados. Hola, mi nombre es Reina María Puxip y me dedico al juego de pelota. Este deporte es tanto como masculino como femenino. Decidimos en este deporte llevarlo en dualidad como nuestros ancestros nos los han heredado. Entonces yo me siento muy contenta que tanto como el hombre, la mujer tienen la misma capacidad de jugar este deporte. Para mí es muy importante porque es un legado que le vamos a dejar a nuestros niños, a nuestros hijos, a los hijos de nuestros hijos. La última meta de este deporte es que, es que haya una, un aporte a la sociedad. Para mí mi sueño más grande sería que estos jóvenes pudieran ser becados para poder tener otro nivel económico y tengan una oportunidad en la sociedad. Cuando vino la Santa Inquisición fue que empezó a prohibir este deporte. Si no hubiese sido prohibido por ellos, ahorita fuera el deporte más famoso que el fútbol. La última meta de este deporte es poder hacer una liga profesional como es el fútbol. El deporte es más que un simple deporte, este es un amor hacia el deporte. is a dance. This is a game of finesse. It's fast. The ball will go between 150 and 170 miles per hour. For the better part of the 20th century, Highlight was the sport in Miami. You went to see it and to be seen. Yet today the sport is barely hanging on. So what happened? Highlight is a sport that was very famous back in the 40s, 50s, and it's, it comes from Europe, Spain, France. In 1924, it arrived in Miami. Highline, one of the oldest of ball games, is taking winter residents at Miami by storm. It's been dubbed the world's fastest game. You may have vague memories of seeing it in a Dos Equis commercial or in the opening scene of Miami Vice. It was an exciting sport and we used to get a lot of celebrities that would come out and want to be a part of it and want to be seen at High Ally. That's Benny Bueno. He's one of the most decorated American High Ally players of all time. He's currently the player manager at Dania Casino. It was a combination of the nightlife and getting dressed up and having a place to go. 
The largest crowd that ever visited Miami Highlight was 15,000 people. The arena held probably about 12,000. It's just something that's visually stimulating for someone that's never seen it. It's addicting in a sense. I've been playing Highlight for 28 years. I got to experience a good five years of seven, 8,000 people in the front time. It was so loud you couldn't really hear your partners. And it was just uh, awesome to play in front of a huge crowd. Now the inevitable question. How did we go from crowds of 10,000 plus to a scattered hundred on a good day? I believe it was in the mid 30s that gambling was legalized on Highlight. The wagering on Highlight has always been a blessing and a curse in the sense where the wagering is what has kept it alive for so long, but it is kind of taking away a little bit of the, the sport, the athleticism, the game itself. Over the years, the focus has changed. It's no longer a Highlight arena. It is a casino with a Highlight arena with a poker room. And the focus is mainly on the property rather than just the sport of Highlight. But that wasn't the sport's only problem. In 1981, then owner of World Highlight, Roger Wheeler, was assassinated. His murder is associated with Whitey Bulger and the Winter Hill Gang. And the sport became inexorably tied to organized crime in the public's mind. Then, in 1988, there was a player strike that lasted three years. It all was the perfect storm where it started to take some of our clientele away. I don't want it to be on my watch that High Ally goes away or fails. It's a lot of fun and it's something that I did for 25 years so I can't just walk away. Looking out at the crowd and seeing less people doesn't deter my work ethic. Go Fred, go Fred! I'm gonna play the same level and prepare myself, whether it's a thousand people or 200 people. Once the ball's in the air, you gotta move. Playing the sport at that, that speed every day, you know, is awesome. I still have the love and the passion for the game. You're playing with and against all the different people in the club, and you learn to appreciate them because of that. It's just a little family. It's an odd little sport, and it's unique. It's easy to play, but hard to master. Kedju Cafe is the only place where there's authentic Belgian feather bowling in the United States. It's a bowling game that uses wooden discs that you throw at a feather at the opposite end of the lane, try and get close to the feather. It's similar to bocce or horseshoes, and then it's a target sport that way. The unique thing about this one is that the lane is convex, and the ball tends to move in odd directions. You can score points by being the closest, with your color ball, closest to the feather of the same color. Yellow touching, not touching, on yellow. Some people are really good right away. Uh, other people, well, they've been in a club for a while and I still don't know what they're gonna do out there when they throw the ball. Oh, it was a point and then it wasn't. It's down to one. This one Keju Cafe today is, is a bar and restaurant in Detroit. This neighborhood was a, was a largely Belgian-American uh, neighborhood at one point. Uh, when the club started in 1933, this was a place for recent immigrants after the war to come over and have a little taste of home. More popular than it's been. I mean, our average attendance for bowling every week has gone up in the last three, four years. And there's a good group of guys here. You know, they're from all, all uh, walks of life. You sit there every week with them. You bowl with them, you bowl against them. And, and it's just a good time. Take a pagan festival, chariots pulled by bikes, and a tiny Welsh town, and you get whatever this is.
This story takes place in the Welsh countryside, in the town of Landward, Landwarded? Flannerted Wells. We are the smallest town in the UK. And this is Lindsay Ketteringham. He runs the local hotel in town. It's called the Nyath Arms Hotel. The town today is a small farming community primarily. Everybody knows everybody else. Day-to-day life is generally pretty quiet around here. Except on event day. The Mountain Bike Chariot Racing Championship is an event that was conceived to be part of a Roman festival that we hold each January. The rules of the race are to get round in the fastest time possible. The course starts off on a short tarmac stretch, then becomes a rough stony road with puddles and bumps, and eventually comes back to the finish along a tarmac stretch which has speed bumps. It's not a simple task. We do encourage people to uh, dress up as the Romans did, as you can see. People enter into the spirit of it, which is what it's all about. Okay, but ben Hur style bike racing isn't everything that this tiny town does. We do the events such as man versus horse, bog snorkeling. And it all started back in the 70s. Sanoted Wells was the centre of the pony trekking industry in Britain. And in the 1970s, unfortunately, the industry went into serious decline. At that point, the local business people started looking for ideas to boost the economy and came up with the idea of running events. Things that were slightly different and unusual. (laughs) It's great to see the success of the events see people enjoying themselves and it's great to be able to share what this part of the uh, countryside has to offer. The aim is to maintain the great community that we have here, even to help it grow, but not too much. We don't want to lose our smallest town status. Hey, I hear you, Lindsay. 